Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below and go and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're looking at another requested Kurzgesagt video called Could Solar Storms Destroy Civilization? Solar Flares and Coronal Mass Ejections. Let's take a look. The sun, smooth and round and peaceful, except when it suddenly vomits radiation and plasma in random directions. These solar flares and coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, can hit Earth and have serious consequences for humanity. How exactly do they work? How bad could they be? And can we prepare for them? That right there is a bit of an exaggeration for visual effects, but uh, yes, solar activity um, can cause all kinds of uh, electronic devices to go haywire. While the sun seems pretty solid, it's actually like a very hot ocean. <laughs> so hot that it rips atoms into electrons and nuclei all flowing around each other in a plasma. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field, similar to how the sun's gravitational field reaches out to the planets and shapes their orbits. But magnetism is very different from gravity. Magnetism is one part of a dual force, electromagnetism. Electricity creates magnetic fields, and magnetic fields create electricity. On the Sun, the plasma made of electrically charged protons and electrons creates a magnetic field as they move, and this magnetic field then shapes the flow of particles. They're stuck in a dynamic feedback loop called a dynamo, which keeps the Sun's magnetic field alive. This magnetic field stores enormous amounts of energy and leaks out over the solar system. It carries with it a constant trickle of solar plasma like a light rain known as the solar wind, creating a sort of space weather. But it isn't always calm and smooth, as the sun's plasma... It's a pretty good explanation of kind of the circular logic of electricity and magnetism. Charge moving creates magnetic fields, but that can only exist with electric fields. Uh, it's interesting how they explain it, but um, there, is an in, there is a fascinating uh, duality um, going on with that. Churns and flows around itself, its magnetic field gets all kinked and twisted. This creates magnetic knots that build up enormous amounts of energy. When the magnetic knots break, like a tangle of springs exploding <laughs> outwards, the sun can vomit plasma and other awful things into the solar system. These solar storms come in many types, like solar flares, a tidal wave of high-energy radiation. They race through the solar system. Again, if you haven't seen my videos before, um, one thing I harp upon is uh, gamma or cosmic radiation isn't actually green, but I know places like Kurzgesagt, you know, do this for a visual effect. Um, some other things less so, <laughs> like the Hulk. <laughs> At the speed of light, sweeping up protons in the solar wind, accelerating them into a high-speed solar proton storm. Then there are coronal mass ejections, which rip millions or billions of tons of plasma from the sun's atmosphere, catapulting it through the solar system at speeds of up to 9 million kilometers per hour. When these monsters hit us, nothing happens on Earth. While even smaller storms can damage satellites, affect radio communication, or be dangerous to astronauts, for people on the surface, space weather is harmless. Earth's atmosphere protects us from the worst effects of a solar flare by absorbing... <laughs> I like the little house from up. Uh, yeah, Earth's magnetic field does protect us. Uh, though I will say interference with satellites can affect things like navigation systems in your car or on your phone blast of x-rays high up in the atmosphere, well before it reaches the surface. The electrified plasma from a CME is deflected by the Earth's magnetic field, diverting the energy storm to the north and south poles, 
where energetic particles fall into the atmosphere, causing the atmosphere to glow and creating beautiful auroras. As with any sort of weather, most of the time, things are fine. Sometimes there are hurricanes though, or in the case of the sun, solar superstorms. Love that font for solar superstorms. <laughs> <laughs> and we know that they happen once or twice every century. If one were to happen today, we would first detect strong solar flares, a sort of flash before the much more dangerous thunder. The thunder is a CME, consisting of billions of tons of hot magnetic plasma that crosses the 150 million kilometers between the... Keep in mind, billions of tons is nothing compared to the mass of the sun. ...and Earth in less than a day. When it arrives, it causes a shock wave that violently compresses the Earth's magnetic field and transfers energy into the magnetosphere. But it can get worse. If the magnetic field of the CME is aligned to Earth's in just the right way, the two magnetic fields merge. As the magnetic cloud passes over Earth, it stretches the Earth's field into a long tail. Eventually, the energy stored in the tail becomes too much to contain. It snaps and explosively releases its energy towards Earth. Hmm. A geomagnetic storm has begun. A few hundred years ago, nobody would have cared. This storm gushing over the Earth is not relevant for machines made out of meat and bones. But it's very relevant for machines made out of metal and wire. Remember the dynamo? Magnetism creates electric currents. Earth in the 21st century is covered in millions of kilometers of wires transporting electricity and a complex grid of machines like transformers that make this transfer possible. There are actually emergency procedures for power plants, especially nuclear power plants, associated with grid issues. I'm going to let the video go first to see what they have to say about it, but I'll talk more about that. A CME's energy can induce currents in our power grid that can either completely shut it down or worse, destroy the transformer stations that keep our grid running. This has happened already, like when the Quebec power grid failed yes. after a strong solar storm in 1989. But in general, our engineers know how to deal with these storms, and so we usually don't even notice. <laughs> the last time a solar hurricane washed over Earth was in 1859, the Carrington event, the largest geomagnetic storms ever observed on Earth. Massive auroras occurred as far south as the Caribbean. In some places, they were so bright that people got up thinking the sun was rising. Luckily, we only had one sort of modern technology, telegraph systems. They failed all over the world, shocking their operators and chucking out sparks. Today, we have a tad more technology, and our luck may run out... <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> ...soon. Another bad solar storm is bound to happen eventually. A storm as strong as the Carrington event missed Earth only by a small margin in 2012. <laughs> Studies projected that it would have inflicted serious damage to electronic systems globally, costing up to $2.6 trillion to the US alone. The time to replace all the damaged systems was estimated at between four and 10 years. It's hard to say how bad it could have been. Experts disagreed. Some assumed there would just be temporary blackouts, but others worried it could be much worse. We won't know for sure until a big solar hurricane hits us. The probability of such an event is estimated to be 12% per decade. That's about a 50-50 chance of at least one in the next 50 years. And there is more unsettling news. A 2019 paper found that even calm stars like our sun can create super flares every few thousand years. Eruption. I love the scene transitions with super flares. <laughs> the orders of magnitude stronger than the strongest storms we have observed in the solar system. If such a storm hits us unprepared, the consequences could be catastrophic. It's hard to overstate how much we depend on electricity. It's not just the lights at home, it means no computers, no communication, no navigation. A sustained power outage might lead to a breakdown of the supply chain water supply systems failing, and hospital generators running dry. Supermarkets not being refilled, while food rots in the field. Would disrupt everything in our modern society. The lack of power might make it extremely hard to reboot our broken power grid, taking years or decades to restart our starving civilization. Okay, time to panic. As much as daily newspapers might like for solar storms to send us back to the Stone Age, they probably won't. 
That's true. There are always, it seems, every now and then, every couple of years, you see something in the news about, oh my god, solar flares. <laughs> Fortunately, even though solar storms aren't preventable, virtually all of their nasty side effects are. The scientists observing the sun have a few hours up to a few days to see a CME coming. And the engineers working the systems that keep the world running are well aware of the risks posed by solar storms. Transformers and substations can be taken offline. Short preventative blackouts, or in other words, by unplugging stuff. Engineers can open up- Okay, they did bring this up to, uh... So, um, I've never dealt with, uh, solar storms or anything like that throughout my career, but I have dealt with extreme weather, um, extreme cold weather in Texas, which Texas isn't as well prepared for. Um, one of the things that the uh, grid operators actually had to do was to selectively turn off um, certain regions in order to uh, maintain stability of the grid. Um, the grid, you have to keep it at a certain frequency, otherwise if it becomes unstable then um, circuits can start tripping offline and cities can lose power in an uncontrolled manner and it can take months to uh, to restore power from this. So one preventative measure, and you can tell this by monitoring the frequency of a grid, is if it gets too low with um, a bunch of power stations going offline, you will need to uh, make the call to um, turn off uh, certain cities, certain neighborhoods, in order to keep the vast majority of um, your region or your civilization even up and running now uh, which is a difficult call but it's you'd rather go have a couple of cities go for a couple of days or even a week without power rather than the entire state going say a month or two without power so as far as solar activity is concerned if you can see it coming you can prepare for these sort of events and you wouldn't have to uh, worry about this sort of doomsday scenario where we lose access to electricity for a decade extra lines to dissipate the extra power and with investment and upgrades cheap compared to those other natural disasters require we could protect the world's electric grid against even the nastiest of storms. But we do need to prepare. While the risk is manageable, it is real. Yeah. For while our sun bathes us in warm and pleasant light, one day it might send a monster our way that we better be ready for. This video was sponsored by you. Right, and that's that. Um, I'm glad they talked about um, some of the operational aspects of how to manage um, a uh, solar storm, or for that many matter, other um, severe weather events. Um, yeah, I guess I guess this technically is weather because it's sol solar activity. Sure, um, it's in the same category. Um, plants follow, um, and other generation facilities follow uh, similar procedures for. Um, <clears throat> for for grid disturbances um for i know for nuclear plants in particular it's a matter of um ensuring your on-site power is available in the event that you lose um your power supplies from the grid um that's those are the sort of things that people in the nuclear industry train for and the grid operators um Again, they go through those same procedures about, um, okay, what, if, if we need to load shed, here's what we're going to do to um, keep the grid stable and avert these sort of um, crazy doom and gloom scenarios that you see every now and then uh, in the news every couple of years. But yeah, that was a very, uh, that was a very informative video. Um, thanks again for uh, making that request. If you have any other requests of videos or... Um, movies, TV shows you want me to react to, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.